and welcome to Turing Dev Talks. This is Joe, your host for today, and I'm signing in from Nigeria. On the panel, we have Manas, a machine learning engineer at Turing, who is also joining us from Hyderabad, India. Manas did his bachelor's in applied mathematics with a, math with a minor in economics, and he started working in the field of data science right after. He has always been interested in solving problems, and here at Turing, he's doing just that. His journey from applied mathematics to machine learning is quite unique, and we'll learn about that more in this discussion. But today, he's here to share his expert insights into the life of a machine learning engineer and why developers must look forward to opportunities in this field. So let's get started. Hi, Manas. First of all, thanks a lot for joining us today. How are you doing and how is work treating you? Hey, Joy, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me here. I just got back from the gym, actually. So ready to get some work in now. Awesome. Looks like you are maintaining quite a healthy life, um, work-life balance while working for Turing. It's always great to hear such stories from our developers. So without further ado, let's get started into our discussion. So um, what exactly is a machine learning engineer and how is it different from say a software engineer? Uh, so the role of a machine learning engineer varies from company to company. It's an amalgamation of a software engineer, a data scientist, and a data engineer in some sort of way. So the primary objective of the machine learning engineer is to make the lives of the data scientists easier by setting up end-to-end -end machine learning development infrastructure, uh, which can help them design, build, maintain reproducible, testable, and like ML-powered uh, software. So an ML engineer should ideally have a good grip on data structures and algorithms, just like a software engineer. They should have the knowledge of the machine learning models like the data scientists, and they should ensure that there's a good data flow between databases and backend systems, just like the data engineer. Right, and with the increasing automation of software engineering, it seems machine learning engineers will drive the companies. What would you say to that? While AI is increasingly used in the field of computer science to augment the skills of professionals like software and machine learning engineers, rather than replacing them outright. The truth is that machine learning engineers and software developers should understand that the future of AI isn't complete automation, rather automating specific and often repetitive and mundane tasks to help the human engineers work faster and more efficiently. So in essence, AI is going to help human engineers rather than threaten or uh, burden them. So to maintain these sort of AI solutions, it would require ML engineers to, you know, productionize these kind of uh, solutions. Okay, so now that you've told us what uh, machine learning engineers are, can you shed some more light on the duties and responsibilities of a machine learning engineer? So the roles and responsibilities vary depending on the size of the organization. So an ML engineer would most likely be part of a larger data science team, which may include data scientists, analysts, and data engineers. But beyond the data teams, machine learning engineers also collaborate with like variety of different stakeholders, straight from like the business leads to the marketing, sales, engineering teams, depending on the level of seniority, of course but it's a highly cross-functional uh, team. So the specific duties can include uh, deploying machine learning solutions to, into production, some aspects of data engineering, such as ensuring good data flow between databases, backend systems, building ETL pipelines, et cetera, and optimizing solution for performance and scalability. So there's a good chance that the machine learning engineer in the company is working on advanced technological solutions on how to scale AI, so if you want something to be computed end to end, that includes from fetching data, generating features and predicting the outcome in tens of milliseconds, that's going to require some deeper engineering in order to be able to adhere to those constraints. Great, you seem to have covered it all. And so on a side note, how did you start out as a machine learning engineer or as a software engineer? So, I had extensive software engineering experience prior to joining Turing, and I joined as a data scientist. So as I explained earlier, right, it's an amalgamation of all these roles. So the software engineering experience helped me along with the data science 
you know, bent of mind of analytics and understanding data in general. And then I transitioned into ML engineering. Okay, Manas. So there are a lot of misconceptions around machine learning. What would you say are some of the most common uh, misconceptions about machine learning? I think the most common misconceptions would be that you need to really know how to apply all the complex and deep learning models and that you'll be doing in your day-to-day -day life. Because honestly speaking, 90% of the projects don't require you to build complex models. Those projects mostly involve a lot of data engineering, data analysis, and hearing insights from the model rather than the process of building the model itself. So focusing on the theory behind simpler models, such as regressions, decision trees, support vector machines, and et cetera, would be more fruitful. The other misconception is that companies only want to hire data scientists or machine learning engineers that have advanced degrees in machine learning. Uh, because there's so much, there's so many opportunities machine learning brings to the table. Companies are going to look to hire engineers that have experience in software and data engineering. So as long as one has sound knowledge of the maths behind machine learning models, they are well-versed with statistics, have great software engineering skills, they can become ML. They can become an ML engineer without the need of a specialized degree in machine learning or data science. Oh, that's interesting. Now, these misconceptions might be some of the reasons why people look at machine learning engineering as a very daunting tax. And on that note, Manas, what would you see as some of the characteristics of a successful machine learning engineer? Well, a successful machine learning engineer should have a solid computer programming skills. So they should be able to understand the specifics of the languages such as C++, Python, Golang, and in which case should one opt for them. One of the most common mistakes I see people make is that they tend to default to a particular programming language just because they're most familiar with it, even if it's not the most optimal uh, for the use case. So an ML engineer should be also familiar with the best engineering practices, just such as writing solid code, knowing how and when to use which design patterns, and a good understanding of software architecture, how to well document the code, because their code is the one that will be productionized. The other characteristic would be to have a sturdy foundation in math and statistics. So an MLNG is also required to run some experiments to assess whether newer models are actually performing better than the previous ones. If a new feature being rolled out actually positively impacts the business metrics. Therefore, it's important to have a good understanding of how you, you should run A-B tests and how your results can be statistically significant or not. The last thing I would like to say is that there should also be creative problem solvers because when you need to optimize solution for performance and scalability, that's when the engineers with out of the box thinking really separate themselves from the others. You really need to get creative with the solutions that you're implementing. And especially when factors such as latency affect the user experience quite a lot. Sounds great. Now to all developers watching this video, here is what you need to know to become an amazing machine learning engineer. You must be well-versed with programming, not just good, but great at maths. You should also be creative at solving problems and must have a strong intuition about data. Now, Manas, we've talked about various aspects of machine learning engineers, but I think our discussion will be incomplete without learning about where the industry is going. Could you shed some insights on that? So I believe that in the next five to 10 years, a regular full stack engineer or any engineer would be expected to be able to work with data in the same way as they are working with the current web frameworks. So with machine learning being at the core of what the World Economic Forum now calls the fourth revolution, fourth industrial revolution, it will become a part of every engineer's daily vocabulary. So there is a wide range of projects and domains that require various expertise, but ultimately there is still a huge gap between the supply of machine learning engineers and data scientists. As new companies enter the space, they're quickly finding out that the two major com 
concerns when it comes to uh, the supply of the talents are quantity and quality. So quantity, basically finding engineers with experiences in machine learning, optimizing and scaling solutions, data engineering, and a strong understanding of software architecture is really like finding a needle in a haystack. So companies want to be competitive and they are forced to interview candidates quickly and make offers under extreme competitive pressure from other companies who are threatening to close the candidate first. So beyond the interview funnel, the sourcing of candidate itself is incredibly difficult and challenging because the field and its applica applications are so nascent. The second uh, is quality. So a lot of developers, I believe, just refuse to be independent thinkers. They often require someone to spoon feed them solutions. However, since many challenges in machine learning uh, require creative thinking, uh, the require creative thinking and coming up with new solutions, this sort of expectation of handholding soon becomes a liability for the team. Also, a lot of good developers choose to found or join smaller tech companies, preferring the autonomy of you know, the startup world. And, the, and then the large corporations, in fact, take these, like acquire these startups just to get access to the talent pool, which creates a massive gap in the market. So this is one of the major reasons why companies are willing to go the extra mile to hire great machine learning engineers. Interesting. I'm sure this would give our developers a good idea of what they should learn in the coming year. And here I'd like to call upon all senior developers who are willing to work remotely with companies in the US. We have jobs in 100 plus technologies, including machine learning and artificial intelligence. If you're confident about your skill sets, head on to turing.com slash jobs and apply now. Manas, this has been a super informative talk, but I believe we are coming to the end of this session. So before we let you go, could you give some advice to developers who are looking to progress or transition into machine learning engineering? Why should they pursue a career in machine learning in 2022? So ML engineering are kind of like a support squad for the data science team. As the complexity of the machine learning algorithms increases, the demand for machine learning engineers also increase. So if you're someone who wants to work with some of the most advanced technological solutions and like to be challenged with tough engineering problems, then you should really consider becoming an ML engineer. That was so helpful. Thanks a lot, Manas, for sharing such valuable advice. This was such an engrossing and interesting discussion. Thank you so much for taking our time and sharing with us your knowledge and expertise. And thank you to all the audience who tuned in for this talk. If you have any queries, please feel free to drop us an email at support at Let us know in the comments below what you'd like to learn in the next video. Give us a big fat thumbs up if you like this video and do not forget to subscribe to Turing.com. We will be back with many such Turing developer stories. Till then, Stay safe and click on the link in the description below to apply to Turing. Thank you.